I first heard of Nikki Rilan uh, in January of this year. Uh, she put out a uh, job post uh, looking for a narrator for her audiobook, Push On. Um, she originally asked for a female narrator, and I said, wait a minute. I did some research on her, I found out her story, and I said, Nikki, I want to tell your story. So we talked a little bit, and she decided, you're my guy. So um, this is the story, Push On, segments from her audiobook. Hope you enjoy it. November 1st, 2013 started out as a cold day, but that wasn't unusual for autumn in Utah. I woke up at 4 a.m. with seven other adventurous souls ready to begin our canyoneering trek through Montezuma Canyon. We'd driven down the night before so we could get an early start, knowing that it would take the whole day to get through that magnificent canyon. I didn't really like waking up before dawn, but we wanted to be sure we exited the canyon before sunset. Montezuma Canyon bragged a 250-foot drop on the back end. Rappelling down the near-vertical rock face should have been the exciting finale of our day, and then we should have had an hour-long, straightforward walk out of the canyon to our car. But things didn't exactly go according to plan that day. We spent more than eight hours hiking, swimming, and climbing before we arrived at the brink of the canyon wall. I was practically giddy as I dug my harness out of my backpack. We all geared up. Then the most experienced members of the group drove the stainless steel anchor bolts into the granite stone. I was fourth in line, so I didn't have long to wait to rappel down that intimidating red-brown rock face. As soon as I pushed off, I knew I had a serious problem. I was spinning round and round like a carousel, 360 degrees, 360 degrees, 360 degrees. Blue sky, brown canyon, blue sky, brown canyon, blue, brown, blue, brown, faster and faster over and over again. I was twirling out of control and I was quickly descending toward the craggy bottom of the canyon. I panicked and my breathing became heavy. Knowing that I had to stop these rotations so I could determine what had gone wrong, I pulled on the rope as hard as I could. About 45 feet from the bottom, I finally stopped spinning like a fishing reel. And then I heard a sickening sound. Click. Suddenly, I was in free fall, and I saw the rope flying unattached above me, my body plummeting toward the unforgiving ground below. It would take me less than two seconds to fall those final 45 feet, and I'd be traveling at 50 feet per second in the instant before I hit the ground. I like free falling, I'm a skydiver, but without a parachute? I screamed, SHISE! I don't want to die! I screamed so loudly that my throat ached, and my solar plexus burned from the fear of death. Then the world faded to black as I lost consciousness. Twelve broken ribs, a fractured sternum, a collapsed lung, a mangled middle finger, a shattered pelvis, and a splintered leg were the source of the countless other pains that were tormenting me. The adrenaline that had flooded my body during the fall was quickly receding, leaving me in unbearable pain. It was pain like I had never known before. Pain that, to this day, I can't really describe to other people. It was so horrendous that it prevented words from escaping my lips. It covered me like an unwelcome blanket. Pain was so severe that I nearly broke the fingers of whosoever's hand I was squeezing for comfort. The pain seemed to last forever. I thought it would never end, or that it would end me. Some people think to be strong is to never feel pain. In reality, the strongest people are the ones who feel it, understand it, and accept it. Unknown. 